Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's start our today's session. And uh, we are having two stations today, rather, uh, station four and station two. So uh, we are starting from the station four scenario. And for the station four, I will invite Dr. Rachel. Uh, Dr. Rachel, are you online? If you're over here, please use the raise hand option. Okay, so please unmute yourself. Uh, hi, doctor. <clears throat> yes, so how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so are you ready for your station four? Yes. Okay, so I am uh, sharing my screen for the station four and you have to do it completely try to follow all the principles of the communication and do the complete counseling for this disease as well as the management. In the end, I will surely correct you. Okay, are you ready? Dr. Rachel, are you ready? Your mic is being muted. Hello? Hello. Dr. Rachel, there is some problem in your connection. Please unmute yourself. Uh, hi, doctor. Okay, so okay. please correct your connection. If it is okay, then we will proceed. Okay, can proceed. Still, I think there is some problem in your connection. Uh, can you, you hear me? Are you able to listen to me clearly? Yes. Yes, it is clear now. Mm. Okay, let's see how it goes. I'm sharing the screen for you. Okay. This is your scenario. Take your time, then get back to me. Uh, sorry, doctor. Yes, hello. Um, and the question, right? Uh, Mr. S Mr. Sadi and counsel him regarding? Is there a second page? Counsel him regarding uh, her daughter's condition. Okay. Just a second, please, just a second. Let's finish this confusion cause it will cause the confusion later let's do it again Dr. Rachel, I am yes, again sharing the screen. Okay. So that there should be no confusion. Now, are you able to see my screen? One minute. Yeah, uh, yes. Is it clear now? Yeah. Okay.
Doctor, I'm ready. Okay. So, I'm giving you timer. And your time starts now. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, I'm Dr. Rachel. I'm one of the doctors in charge of the clinic today. Am I speaking to Mr. Sadi? Yes, I am. Hi, Mr. Sadi. Are you Miss Elena's father? Yes, I am. I hope, I, don't, I, I hope you don't have to wait too long to see me today. Okay, thank you for your concern. Okay, Mr. Sadi, I have obtained the consent of Miss Alina, who's your daughter. Um, I have obtained her consent to speak to you regarding her condition today. Um, uh, okay, I, that's good. Okay, so um, Mr. Sadi, may I know what do you understand regarding your daughter's condition? I don't know what's going on with her, but yeah, we are much troubled because of her health condition. She is having some weakness and also she is having vision loss. And it is happening again and again and we are being to various doctors, but nobody is guiding us properly. I don't know what's going on and I am over here in your clinic to please explain to me what's wrong with my daughter. Okay, Mr. Sadi, I, I appreciate your concern. So uh, I'm here to explain to you regarding your daughter's condition. Okay, so basically, Miss um, Alina, your daughter, she came in two months ago with the symptoms that you have told me just now. She came in with blurring of vision over her right eye. And then subsequently, um, she, she actually experienced similar symptoms six months ago. Am I right? Yes, you are very right. We have conducted a thorough investigation on your daughter and we have performed a, 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 a brain scan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last okay. week, and we have already uh, got the result of the scan. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Unfortunately, the, um, the result is not as good as what we expected. What do you mean? <clears throat> like, so, is she suffering from any sort of cancer? No, um, it's not a cancer, but she was diagnosed with a, a, a condition called multiple sclerosis. Don't worry about the medical jargon. I'm going to explain to you uh, regarding her condition. I'm going to draw for you. So uh, uh, is that okay with you? Yes, okay with me. Okay, so um, uh, as, you, I, as you can see in my drawing here, so this is the brain and, this is, um, be, and below this is the spinal cord. Basically, what is, happen what is happening to your daughter now is your, your, your daughter actually had a disease um, in, in, her, in, her, uh, in, her, uh, in her brain, okay, which, mm -hmm. is actually causing, which is actually causing her to have this um, um, separate episode of uh, blurring of vision, of the neurological symptoms of blurring of vision, you know, which came like um, once or six months ago and uh, subsequently the second episode, she got it two months ago. So far- Okay, I know this, but exactly what's wrong with my daughter? Can you please explain to me in detail? Okay, so uh, multiple sclerosis is actually, um, it's, a, it's a condition where the patient's own uh, defense system is attacking her own body. Mm -hmm. Do you get Okay. Me? Yeah. So which sort um, of defense system you're talking about? Is is actually her 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 own immune system is attacking her body. Okay. Okay. So unfortunate um so that is why she she came in with this uh symptoms six months ago and now she came in again. So um, okay. un unfortunately um, this disease is treatable but not curable. We mm -hmm. do have, uh, we do have, we do have a medication to to control the progression of the disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk to you about the treatment in a while. But before that, I need to explain to you the cause of the disease, how this this multiple sclerosis might affect her. My impact yes, on her. I'm very much interested because it is destroying completely her life. Her life is in miserable condition, and he is unable, and she is unable to even carry out the daily activities. And especially, yes. she is going into depression. 
Yeah, I, 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 I understand that um, it must be a difficult time for Miss Alina and your family. Don't worry, we'll be here with you and your daughter and your family throughout this journey. All right. So before okay. that, Mia, is, uh, what is your daughter's occupation? What is Miss Alina's occupation? She is working as a school teacher. As a school teacher. Is she married? Yes. How many children does she have? She is having one kid. Okay, so I need to know if um if if she has a good social uh good social and family support in the yes. family. Yes. No issue regarding the social or the financial support. Okay. Um. I'm glad to hear that she has good support. All right. So um. Uh, I need to be honest with you, Mister Sadi. Okay. So this this um this neurological. This neurological condition of your daughter might impact her. Okay, um, she might be all right now, but over time she might be the disease might progress, and she might and actually might affect her daily activities, and also might um might cause in um disability in her. Okay, um, which sort of disability you're talking about? I'm a concerned father, and you are one by one breaking a bad news and it's quite distressing for me please talk yeah. to me openly so that i should know what will happen to my daughter in the future okay so the worst thing that could happen to her she might not be able to over over time in in the next 10 to 15 years she might have this the difficulty in uh, ambulating she might be wheelchair bound over time because this disease itself will actually affect her then do something for my daughter. Yes, that Give is why. Help. Yes, that is why I'm here to talk to you today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about um a, a, a medication. It's called interferon. Okay, so it's one of the treatment option because we have already after we your daughter has been diagnosed with this condition, we have already consulted our new um our uh, brain doctor who's actually expert. It's a, it's a uh, brain specialist who's expert in treating multiple sclerosis, okay. And after um, so sh um, my consult my neuro cons my brain consultant has has decided that um we we I, we need to counsel you regarding this medication called interferon, which is actually the treatment for multiple sclerosis. Okay. Apart from that, regarding the disability that she might be having. I'm, I'm good. Uh, I will be referring her to uh, support groups and also over time I'll refer her to physiotherapies and occupational therapies to help to preserve her function so that she could um, consume a, as normal a normal life as possible. All right. How so many now chances that are there that she will be wheelchair bound in upcoming years? Okay, uh, Mr. Sadi, there are different subtypes of multiple sclerosis. So, um, amongst all, we have, um, uh, don't worry about the medical jargon. I'm going to explain to you in a while, but I'm just generally going to tell you this. We have a few types. We have um, those uh, primary progressive, and some of the patients, they, they might have another relapse of the symptoms. You know, depends on which subtype uh, that your daughter is having. However, if you ask me, um, when will she develop that disability? It's variable. It depends on patient to patient. But over time, um, in the next, uh, most some of my patient, they after ten to 15, 15 years, they might they might develop that disability that will cause them to be wheelchair bound. What about the pregnancy? How we should um, advise her regarding uh, her family life? And do you think that the disease will get worsened during the pregnancy? Uh, the disease will not get worsened over pregnancy, but um, in case uh, uh, if your daughter is going to become pregnant, uh, she needs to um, let us know so that we will be co-managing her with the uh, pregnancy doctor so that we could manage your daughter and the baby together with the um, pregnancy doctor. It means okay. that she can get pregnant. Yes, she can get pregnant. This the, the the this disease does not run in family, so she can get she can get pregnant. No issue with that. Just that. And what do you in, think? How will be the symptoms during the pregnancy? I'm so sorry. How will be the symptoms of this disease during the pregnancy? 
um, during pregnancy, this disease might, uh, will not worsen. Okay. Mm. And what so about after pregnancy? After after pregnancy, still we have to we have to continue to she need she needs to be on con she needs to be constantly under our follow up, she needs to be constantly be seen by our um brain doctor who's in charge of who's expert in multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. mm. So now today um next I'm I'm going to talk to you regarding this treatment option we have here, it's called interferon. So basically, is um interferon is a group of signaling signaling proteins um so it's actually used it's, it's, it's used in um in the treatment of uh, multiple sclerosis which is the condition that your what your daughter is having now okay okay so um so far are you with me i am with you and i am understanding you but i don't know how to tell everything to my daughter and secondly how she will cope up in the future and what support i can provide to her okay so now i will explain to you this interferon therapy so it's actually used to treat and control um multiple sclerosis and actually it can help in reducing the attacks of the um of a, of a type of um, uh, multiple sclerosis, which is relapsing remitting, and actually can help to slow down the disease progression and activity in a, in a, uh, in a, in a secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. So far, are you mm -hmm. with me? Yeah. I'm with you. Okay, all right. So, um, so uh, after this, I'll be prov providing you with brochures and leaflets uh, so that you can have a better understanding of your, father, of your uh, daughter's condition. So um, anytime if you need more, uh, if you have any queries or need more um, uh, understanding regarding the condition, you can always call to our ward or our clinic so that we, we, always, we are always here to provide support for you. All Thank right. you so much, doctor. And you are left with two minutes only. Okay. May I know if you have any concerns, sir? Yes. What are the social aspects which my daughter should consider, and how, so she, she, how how she should cope up in her in-laws, and what precautions she should take? Okay, so um, the social aspect now I understand that she's working as a school teacher, so um, she she because over time this disease might might progress. So um, right now she can still continue with her work, but uh, we we can provide her with some job retraining so that um, she could you know in in case this. Do you think that she should continue working as a school teacher or she should uh, change the profession now? I think she should change the profession now. She can start going through the job retraining so that she can change her pro progression. Um, she can change her profession now. You know, another another aspect of, is it of it is the depression that you told me your daughter is having. I'll be referring yes, her. She to is mood. having depression. Yes. Yes. So I'll be referring her to mood doctors to help her. I'll be refer referring her to mood doctors and. Uh, so social support group to help her cope with this disease okay and 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 she it, it i understand that this disease itself is actually causing a lot causing her a lot of limitations in her work so i actually suggest um a change in um i, I don't encourage her to continue working as a school teacher so um actually um encourage for a change uh in um in working environment so that there's uh, changes in her social functioning would that be all right for you all right for me and your time is up okay one minute for reflection then we will move ahead Yeah, Doctor, I'm ready. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. 
tell me do you think that the smoking is any if is having any effect on multiple sclerosis uh, yes okay but you are not asking yeah what about alcohol my daughter is abusing the alcohol nowadays because of depression yeah i should have explored the social uh, i should have explored further regarding the social history okay and why do you want to change the job of my daughter so because this disease is actually causing um her uh, in the it is causing limitation in her job and i do not want her to i do not want to cause more distress in her what she should do then i should actually refer her to uh to what do to, you suggest ah huh? what do you suggest I should refer She's a teacher. To... Do you think a... that the teaching is a high risk job for multiple sclerosis? No. Then why are you are changing the profession of the patient? Oh. Okay. Mm. What about driving? She is driving nowadays sports cars. Yeah, I should stop her driving because she has impairment. But she loves. Uh, she loves driving sports car. Um, you are not asking me. Yeah, I should have asked about the smoking, alcohol, and driving. Last week, she attempted suicide. Do you think oh. that you should have insight into the depression of my daughter? Yes, I should assess the suicidal risk. Okay. How many types of multiple sclerosis are there? Um. So we have. Uh, Tell we have types. we have primary progressive, secondary progressive, relapsing and remitting, and progressing and progress uh, progressive, uh, progressive relapsing, uh, neuromyelitis optica or Davix disease, or rarer subtypes like Marburg. Okay. What are the legal issues in this scenario? The legal, the first legal issue in this scenario is consent. So, um, I have already obtained the consent of um uh, Miss Alina, uh, to speak to her father, Mister Sadi. Other to involve here is driving. I should actually, I, I, I should, um, I should stop the driving, as the patient actually had a uh, visual impairment, so she should not drive. And actually, I should advise her to inform, a uh, DVLA. Okay, what about the patient confidentiality? Patient confi um I have obtained the consent from her. So this is this is the legal issue. Yeah, you are mentioning in front uh, in the start of your scenario that you have taken the permission from the daughter to talk about her health condition with me. So yes. you are taking care of confidentiality, and the confidentiality is always a legal issue. Okay. Patient confidentiality. Okay. What are the medical issues in this scenario? The medical issue involved here first, uh, multiple sclerosis. Second, mm -hmm. uh, uh, depression. Mm -hmm. The third, um, uh, suicidal, suicidal. Uh, I need uh, suicidal or suicidal attempt. Optic yes. neuritis. Sorry. And optic neuritis. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and and optic neuritis. What are the treatment options available for multiple sclerosis? So the treatment option available, we have uh, in the acute phase, uh, uh, in the acute attack, we have IV methylprednisolone. So we do have um, immunomodulating agents. And we can actually start the patient on azathioprine and if you uh, can give rituximab. And then uh, we also have uh, beta, interfer in beta interferon. Are there any prerequisites to start beta interferon in this patient? Prerequisite. We have to take a full. Uh, we have to take full uh, blood investigation. Which sort of in investigation you are interested in? Uh, full blood count. Why? Uh, need to make sure the patient does not have any cytopenias. Okay. What else? Uh. You so you mean other prerequisites for interferon? 
what are the prerequisites to start interferon in a particular patient? Um, I have to make sure that the patient, uh, the liver, liver function that is. Uh, and she is having tuberculosis. Will you start the interferons or not? No, tuberculosis and hepatitis are, are contraindication to start an, an interferon. She is having cardiac failure. Will you start interferons or not? No, cardiac failure is a contraindication. She is for... having hepatitis B, which is active. Will you start interferons or not? No. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. And what are the side effects of interferons? Don't you think that you should counsel about the side effects? Yes, I you should. Are starting a medication to the patient and you are not counseling regarding the side effects of a particular medicine. What is the yeah. most common side effect of interferons? The most common um, gastrointestinal side effects like uh, nausea, no. vomiting. Uh, uh, Tuberculosis? No, tuberculosis okay. is never a side effect of any medication. Yes, you can say reactivation of tuberculosis, but there is a very common side effect of interferon. Hepatitis? Okay, I will let you know in the feedback. Okay, so what are the legal issues in this scenario? Legal issue? Uh, just now we talked about already the optic neuritis. Multiple sclerosis, suicide. Legal issues, legal issues. Oh, legal sorry, issues. Sorry, 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 sorry. Ethical issues, ethical issues. So um, uh, first is autonomy. The patient uh, and her father has the right to know regarding the condition, the disease progression, the impact on her, the impact, impact of the disease on her uh, future, on her daily activities and future prospects of life. Um, and of the treatment option available on her. So other no, this is not autonomy. Uh, and no. do you think that the father has a right to know about her health condition? You said that the patient and the father has a right to know about her health condition. How the father has the right? She, she, uh, the father has the right to know after being given permission by her daughter, by his yes, daughter. Yes, 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 yes. So if there is no permission from the daughter, the father has no right to ask or inquire or know about her health condition. And the autonomy states that the patient has all the right to accept or reject beta interferons after knowing their pros and cons. This is autonomy. Okay. What is beneficence? Beneficence um, in this uh, scenario. First, um, we introduce uh, the treatment option of interferon to the father. <clears throat> so, uh, and at the same time, I actually offer to refer her to so, a support group, um, mood doctor, uh, to psychiatrists, support groups, physiotherapists, and occupational therapists to good, help her cook. Good, good. And you are giving your time to her. You are counseling yes. her, and you are counseling her father. This is also in the beneficence. What yes. is non-maleficence? Non-maleficence is do no harm if given enough time. After exploring um, the patient's social history of the uh, of driving and all of those things, I should stop her from driving so that so that to prevent harm. Uh, to this the is beneficence. This is not non-maleficence. You are stopping the patient from driving because she is having optic neuritis, blurring of the vision. This is in her beneficence. What is, oh. what is the definition of non-maleficence? Do no harm. Do no harm. It means a doctor should do no harm. A doctor should do no harm to the patient by his words, his actions. His treatment option, his intervention. And what treatment option you are giving? Uh, interferon. Interferons. So you have to avoid all the side effects of the interferons. This is non-maleficence. Non-maleficence is you are saving the other person from your harms. 
the harms which you might inflict on a particular person by your treatment, by your procedure, by your words, by your action. Clear? Yes. So you are running the test for uh, tuberculosis, you are running the test for hepatitis, you are doing this and this, psychocardiographies. This is all for to avoid the non maleficence in this patient. You want to avoid the side effects of interferons. You don't want to kill the patient by interferon beta. What is justice? Uh, uh, in this situation, uh, Miss Elena, she has, uh, she has, uh, like any other, and uh, like all the patients, she has the right to receive, uh, the equal treatment, um, for multiple sclerosis, irregardless of race, creed, religion, gender, and nationality. Uh, yeah. And financial status. Yes. Okay. Doctor Rachel. Okay. Yeah. So now I am. Um, uh, explaining the scenario to you, basically this was the scenario which I have already posted in the Zoom chat box about the concerned father who wants to know about the daughter's health condition and the daughter is having multiple sclerosis with optic neuritis and your task is to explain the father regarding the um, disease process that is uh, multiple sclerosis as well as a treatment option that is interferon beta. Now, Whenever you are starting your scenario, first of all, you should make sure of the patient confidentiality. You will never talk with the other person, the third person, without taking the appropriate consent of the patient. So you will enter like that in your examination hall. First of all, enter in the examination hall, greet your examiners, greet the patient, hello. Good morning, my name is Dr. Assam, one of the doctor in the clinic today. Am I speaking to Mr. Sadi? the father of Miss Alina, 28 years old patient. Yes, I am. Sir, I hope I have not let you wait too long today to meet me. Yes, it's okay. Or you can simply say to her, say to him that, sir, how you are feeling today? Because you have to establish the rapport, establish the rapport before starting the scenario, before opening up the scenario, before embarking on your task, this is, important in your communication skill that you should establish rapport. You will not straight away start like that, sir, your daughter is having multiple sclerosis and I am a doctor, I am over here to explain about the interference, okay? So okay. you're establishing the work. Now, after that, you have to establish the agenda. Might be the father is over here to get some medical certificate for the daughter might be he is over here for some insurance document might be he is over here to ask or to discuss about her pregnancy issues but your task is to explain to explain about the multiple sclerosis and about interference so you both should be on one page this is called setting the agenda setting the agenda why you are over here today in this meeting Sir, we are over here to talk about your daughter's health condition. And before I proceed, I will let you know that I have taken the permission of your daughter to talk about her condition with you. Okay? Okay. Then, of course, you will say, Sir, what exactly you have been told about your daughter's health condition? before I start. So he will tell you the story. He will tell you exactly what he has been told. Might be he has been told that the daughter is having uh, multiple sclerosis. Might be he's having some knowledge about the multiple sclerosis. Might be he has been already told that uh, the daughter is about to start the interference. So take his insight, take his insight. Why? Because if you both are not on the one page, you have only 14 minutes in this scenario and you will waste too much of time to be on one page. So it is very good approach to be on the one page in the very start of the scenario. If he's having some other agenda, you can say that, sir, after some time, I will be in a better position to answer and address all your concerns so that you should be on the one page, okay? Might be, I'm giving you an example, he wants an insurance paper to get signed. 
she was not having uh, the multiple sclerosis before. Now, the insurance people have sent you the document to sign that she is not having any illness. And the father is over here to talk with you that please sign these papers. But your task is to explain, to explain, to explain about the MS and to explain about the interferons. So if he's saying to you that in the very start, this will be a very sur big surprise for you in the exam. And of course, in the exam, you are in, under the catechulum in rush. You're working on your spinal levels. You're already having a lot of palpitations. So the better is that you should be clear what exactly going on. So you will say, sir, I will be in a better position to talk about the insurance thing at the end of the scenario. Okay. Okay. Then, sir, we have got some scans of your daughter and today the results are with me and the results are not as we have hoped for. This is not a bad news. We are usually taking the scenario of the breaking bad news in which the disease is leading to direct death or the disease is a cancer which is now widespread with no treatment option available. So this is a disease, a simple disease, which is a chronic disease. This is not a breaking bad news scenario, but yes, you have to give a warning shot. So the results are not as we have hoped for. So your daughter is having a condition called multiple sclerosis. Don't bother by the medical term. This condition uh, is a condition in which her brain and the spinal cord is under attack by the defense system. So first of all, you have to tell the diagnosis, then you have to explain bit of the pathophysiology, bit of the pathophysiology without any medical jargon. If you're using medical jargon, they will cut your mouth, okay? So bit of pathophysiology, but don't go in the details of pathophysiology. So, she is having something called multiple sclerosis. And in this disease, the defense system, this is the same system which is fighting against the germs and the bugs, which are entering in our body. The same defense system is now misdirected and is attacking the different part of your daughter's brain as well as spinal cord. That's why there is problem. That's why she is having a vision problem. That's why she is having all that stuff which you were mentioning me before. Now the next step is to explain about the clinical features of this disease. Why? Because next time she is having any feature, she is having any problem, she should know that this is the relapse of multiple sclerosis you should tell about the clinical features. And you all know that the multiple sclerosis is a disease which is involving only, only, only CNS, central nervous system, which is not involving the peripheral nervous system. So virtually each and every part of CNS can get under attack of multiple sclerosis. So you have to tell like that, sir, I'm so sorry to tell that. Right now, there is no cure available for this disease, but a lot of medical research is going on in this regard. Might be one day we will be able to get some cure in this regard, but right now, no cure is available. But with this, let me assure you one thing, we will not let your family suffer. We will not let your daughter suffer. We will not let her in the depression. There are some medication which can control the symptoms, which can keep the disease in check, in control. But unfortunately, this disease can arise or this disease can, uh, you know, uh, 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 come in, uh, can become active anytime in the future. And to be aware and to mark you and to tell you exactly what can happen, I will also provide you with the brochures, with the leaflets, with some web addresses, 
But for now, let me tell you a few things. It can lead to weakness or transient weakness in any limbs of the body. It can lead to numbness. It can lead to balance problems. It can lead to vision problems. It can lead to even permanent loss of vision. So anytime, if she is getting any problems, any such issues, this is our ER number. Please feel free to contact us. Is it clear? Yes. <laughs> and also, you have to tell the complications. Now, what are the complications? Bladder bowel problems, and of course, the complete vision loss. Of course, you all know that it can lead to optic atrophy. So, the thing is that you should provide him with red flags. Why? Because if in future anything is occurring, anything is happening, they should present to us. They should come back to us immediately. Clear? Yes. Now, after that, before embarking on the journey of explaining the management options, explaining how to uh, manage this disease. And of course, we will manage this disease both with a non-pharmacological way and the pharmacological way. Still, we need to explain about the prognosis of this disease. This is very, very important in station four to tell about the prognosis of this disease. And the prognosis is there in front of your screens. This is the pattern. This pattern should be drawn, should be drawn for your surrogate. To explain to him that this disease can take any turn. Some patients are very lucky. They are having benign multiple sclerosis. They are having attacks and they are on the regular medication. In between attacks, they are very fine. In, be in between attacks, they are fully functional. They can do anything what they want. And even in between attack, they will be allowed to drive. But in some patient, this disease become relapsing and remitting and the patient is not knowing what do you mean by relapsing and remitting. So we have to draw. We have to draw the diagram. And this diagram is in front of you on the screen. And unfortunately, this re relapsing and remitting is quite debilitating and of course each attack is severe than the before then there is secondary progressive disease in which initially there is the attacks the disease in between the patient is fully normal in between the patient is fully functional but unfortunately later on this disease become active this disease remains active this disease remains with the patient and he is not functional anymore. And of course, the last but not least is primary progression. That is the disease is starting and it is taking this pathway that it will stick to the patient. So if you can spend few time, few minutes, few moments, you can draw for it because to explain the prognosis in your station for carry marks. It is important for you to explain and tell to him that I don't know, we don't know, we as a team don't know which path this disease will take. We are not sure, but we will be over here to help her in all the regards. Clear, Dr. Rachel? Yes. Hello, are you with me? Yes, Doctor. Okay, ultimately, then you have to counsel her regarding interference. Now, let me tell you one thing that the interferons initially uh, were, according to my knowledge, they were in the category C pregnancy, but now, I think they have now uh, excluded them from that. And uh, of course, there is some concerns about the usage of interferon in the pregnancy. So it is better to ask whether she is pregnant or not. And then ultimately you will counsel uh, him that, sir, we have a very good medication which is being given through 
the injection forms to your daughter. And it will keep the disease in check. It will keep the disease in control. But I'm sorry, it is not a cure. It will not cure the disease. And before starting this medication, before giving this medication, we will exclude some infections. It is enough to mention the word infection to your patient before uh, giving these, these injections, these shots, we will exclude active infections in your daughter and also the heart problems. This is very necessary. No. We will exclude, then we will start. And to be a safe doctor, to be a responsible doctor, to be a responsible clinician, it is very important for you to explain to him the side effects. Anytime he is getting any thyroid issues, like symptoms, you have to tell the symptoms, she should present to you. Anytime she is having uh, something, something called some rash or some active infections, she should present to you. And the most common side effect, which I was asking, which I wanted you to tell me, is the flu-like condition, flu-like condition after uh, the shot, after interferon shot, might be in a couple of hours, like in 24 to 48 hours. And this is very important to say to him that, sir, your daughter might get flu-like illness. Don't worry, this is recoverable. This is benign. This is treatable. This is not dangerous. This is a good sign that the medicine is acting. And for that, I will simply give you acetaminophen. Is it clear? Yes. Because why? He will go to home and she will get a flu-like symptom and then you will get a call that she has got a reaction. But this is a simple thing that you can get a flu-like illness with the interferons. Clear? Yes. Now, he's asking you about the pregnancy things. In the pregnancy, the rule of the thumb is that most, not all, most autoimmune diseases get better in the pregnancy get better in the pregnancy but after after the pregnancy sometimes there is remission oh, sorry there is relapse so you should warn that a disease can come with more severity after she will deliver the baby and she can get pregnant there is no issue in getting pregnancy in getting pregnant but of course she should tell to her female doctor, that is a gynecologist, regarding her health condition, that is multiple sclerosis. There is a concern. Will she get wheelchair bound? Sorry, sir. I am not in a position to comment on this. We don't know which course this disease will take. We are not sure. But yeah, if any time she is unable to carry the regular activities, she is unable to carry household works, we will surely provide her with all the social support which she requires. Then there is a hidden agenda. There is a dangerous task in this scenario. Should complete it. The dad is saying that the daughter is having depression and the depression is quite worsened. Being a safe doctor under Mental Health Act, you should explore, you should explore, you should explore about the possibility of suicidal intention, suicidal ideation. And might be if you're asking me in the, in, during the session, I can tell you that yes, my daughter committed the suicide one week back. So in this state, you have to restrain this patient enter under Mental Health Act Section 5B. You will not let her go. So whenever, usually, uh, uh, you know, there are instructions in the Station 4 that the history taking is not allowed in Station 4. You are not supposed to take the medical history or examine the patient in the Station 4. 
but in if the father or the patient is stating to you that i am depressed now depression can give two type one is without any suicidal ideation another is she wanted to commit suicide if there is any suicidal ideation you have to restrain this patient in the hospital for up to 72 hours till the psychiatrist see this patient under mental health act clear yes so you have to say to the dad that what do you think she ever tried to end up her life do you think that life is still beautiful for her do you think that she is seeing any hope in the future if you think that the answers are no 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 then it means that you have to uh, think about the depression and you will involve uh, the psychiatrist as early as possible and you will not let this patient go and of course if the patient is suicidal she has lost the capacity she cannot take any decision about her health because she has lost the capacity suicidal patient is having no capacity in the end it is very important for you to take hold of the social history what is social history you know very well sajid sajid Abbreviation is Sajid. Sorry, mnemonic is Sajid. As for smoking, if she's smoking, stop. Smoking is not good for multiple sclerosis. She is already in depression. Might be she is having binge drinking. Stop, please. Stop alcohol. Then the job, exactly what she is working. If she is doing any high risk job you must change the profession after the meeting with occupational health physician then i i told you guys the sergeant s for smoking a for alcohol j for job i for illicit drugs why the drugs are important in this case because she is having depression she is not seeing any light at the end of this dark tunnel of multiple sclerosis. Might be she is abusing the drugs. Ask about illicit drugs. If she is taking illicit drugs, you should refer her to a rehabilitation teams. Last but not least, driving. Why driving is important? Because she is having optic neuritis. She is having blurring of the vision. She cannot even differentiate between the colors. She can differentiate between the colors in the optic neuritis, there's color desaturation. So it is important to ask about the driving. And if she is driving, immediately stop driving and say to him that your daughter should inform the VLA. In the end, it is a good practice that you are uh, offering some leaflets, some brochures, some web addresses, but one thing you're missing, Dr. Rachel. That is multiple sclerosis societies. They are society in the UK for these patients. They can discuss, they can talk, they can express their feelings with same people. They are the groups of the patients which can talk with each other, which can communicate with each other, which can discuss the problem which they are facing in their social life. In the very last, if you have time, explore about the social aspects and specific hobbies because the multiple psychosis will surely impact her hobbies and how she is coping her with, uh, with her kid as well as the husband. This is all about this night now. Anybody wants to ask any questions or concerns, please use the raise hand option. Sir, I want to ask, so just now. Yes. Just now, uh, so the father asked whether this uh, Miss Elena can still continue with her job as a teacher. So the answer is yes, sir. Yes, because this is not a high risk job. She can continue. 
So if let's say this scenario change, uh, sir, if this scenario change is a young lady who is actually um, wanted to do uh, medical school, wanted to become a doctor, is she allowed to continue to I am, to, to... I am, I am giving you an example. Say, for example, this lady is uh, driving a cab. Then, of course, we have to stop. Say, for example, this lady is having some task or some work with a vision. Of course, you have to stop the profession. Because she will suffer. Because she will suffer. Uh, sorry. Because she will suffer from, uh, of course, the financial uh, draw of, uh, setbacks. And the, you know, the employer will, of course, have some problem with him. Okay, clear? Yes. Okay, Dr. Rachel, thank you. Thank you for your participation. Now let me take up the questions. Yes, Dr. Eskimi, please unmute yourself. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And thank you, sir, for the explanations. And also thank you, Dr. Rachel, for the uh, attempt. I wanted to ask uh, a few questions. First of all, um, the statement or what you said about um, restraining the patient if the patient had suicidal ideations, uh, I don't know, does it apply to just, um, is it only patients that are suicidal that need to be restrained, or is it any uh, patient that has yes. I will try. I will try to upload uh, the mental health act for you in our WhatsApp groups. Okay, Actually, sir. the person who is suicidal, who is saying to you that I will go and do suicide, one thing, or is not saying you that he will do suicide, but by your history, you are assessing that he can do the suicide. Okay. okay, you are thinking that the life is not beautiful for him and he is trying to end up or he is high risky and he can kill other person. So what you will do, you will restrain him in the hospital under Mental Health Act Section 5B, which states that being, being, being a healthcare worker, you can, being a doctor, you can restrain him for 72 hours. This will okay. not require his con consent. This is against, might be he's fighting with you that, no, I will not uh, stay in your hospital, but you have to restrain because this is your legal obligation. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Clear? Right. And yes, then, sir. then in the 72 hours, psychiatrist will evaluate and the psychiatrist can even restrain him for a couple of weeks, even months. Okay, sir. My second question, was about, okay, my ahead, second question was about, I still have a lot of confusion about the difference between legal issues and ethical issues. I don't know if you could explain with examples that would make it clear for me. Because the question keeps coming up. Okay. Every Okay, yes, 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 yes. This question is very important question and uh, this question can arise in your exam and it is usually arises in the exam because you should know about what are the legal issues, what are the ethical issues, what are the medical issues. So the legal issue is the issue which can drag you up in the court. If you are not doing that thing, you can and land up in the court. Say, for example, you are not taking the consent from the patient and you are performing some procedure. You can land up in the court. This is legal uh, 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 issue. Second is a person who is ill, who is sick, and without his permission, you are talking about his health condition with his mother or father or wife or kids. This is called breaking the confidentiality. You are breaking his or her confidentiality without his cons consent. This is second legal issue. Second legal issue is confidentiality. 
third legal issue, a person who is about to die. You are thinking that the time is less, is having advanced cancer, it is metastasized to the brain, to the spine, to everywhere. You should talk about advanced directives. Any wish, any will, you should write down under the evidence, under the signatures of the liar. This is called advanced directives. This is also a legal issue, a legal document. Then, of course, lasting power of it all. Say, for example, I am having a cancer. And you think that he can lose the consciousness or he can lose the capacity to make the decision anytime in the future. So you should talk with me, sir. Your condition is not okay. In the near future, you can anytime deteriorate. You can anytime go into confusion. You can anytime get unconscious. Please assign someone as your lasting power of it all. Now, I will assign a person to whom I trust that he or she should be my lasting power of attorney and she will take the decisions on my behalf if I am getting unconscious or if I'm getting uh, losing the capacity. Say for example, you are committing a medical error. Say for example, you are giving me a medication. I am, this was a renotoxic medicine like aminoglycoside and you are not checking a drug level. I am landing up in a renal failure, but you can say AKI, acute kidney injury, but you are giving me IV fluids. I am getting better. I am fully better now. I am not even knowing that I had got AKI secondary to amino glycoside because you are not checking my drug levels. Now I am not knowing, but this is your duty to tell me that this has happened. This is called duty of condor, duty of condor, duty of condor. This is also a legal issue. If you are not performing these legal issues, you can be in the trouble. These are the legal issues. Now, what are the medical issues? Say, for example, in this, and also the legal issues driving. A person who is not, you know, deemed safe for the driving, who can, you know, having vision loss or might be having some, um, you can say, CNS problem, might be having uh, some stroke, and you are not stopping him from driving, you can land up in the court. So you have to stop the driving by informing the DVLA. Driving is also a legal issue. Now, the medical issues. Say, for example, in this scenario, which we have discussed, optic neuritis was a medical issue. Multiple sclerosis was a medical issue. Depression was a medical issue. Now coming to the ethical principles or ethical issues. Number one is autonomy. Patient, not attendant. I am speaking about patient has all the right to accept or reject the treatment option or a procedure or an intervention after knowing it's all pros and cons. Then, beneficence. You are acting in a beneficence of a patient. You are doing some procedure, you are doing some surgery, you are giving interferons, you are counseling to the patient, you are providing physiotherapy, you are providing dieting consultation, you are providing great exercise programs, you are providing with some counseling, some sports, you are providing brochures, leaflets. This all comes under the beneficence. You are doing all that stuff for the patient beneficence. This is also an ethical principle or ethical problem. Then non-maleficence. Now, what is non-maleficence? Non-maleficence is to save the patient from your harms. To save the patient from the harms which you might, being a doctor, you might inflict on the patient from your behavior, from your words, from your interventions, from your medication. I give you example. You are starting a patient on the methotrexate. And you are not checking for the cell counts, or you are not bothered about the lung fibrosis, which can be the side effect of methotrexate. And the patient is landing up the lung fibrosis. This is the problem now. So non maleficence is you must not cause any harm to patient. You must take care of 
uh, the adverse effect of the complication of the medication and the procedures. Say, for example, you are doing a lumbar puncture, you are not doing it directly. You are properly taking aseptic measures. You are cleaning that area. You are taking all the precautions to even uh, checking the, you know, the coagulation profile, all that stuff. This is non-maleficence. You want to avoid the patient from going into complication by your LP, by your lumbar puncture. Now, other ethical principle is justice. Mr. X has all the right to get treated equally as with other patient. As you're providing the treatment to other patient, he also has the right to get the same treatment, irrespective of his cost, his creed, his gender, his religion, religion or his financial status. And one last ethical principle that is very important, a lot of candidates are usually, uh, you know, uh, forgetting it in the exam, that is truth telling. Now, say for example, uh, I am asking you, uh, will I get better? Will my daughter get better? Because she is having multiple sectosis. Do you think that she can uh, be a good uh, boxer? Might be. You have to tell truth that this disease is will this disease will not allow him to do that. Say, for example, a uh, patient is having cholangitis, and you are planning for ERCP. Okay, and the ERCP is necessary to be planned with the, in next few hours, and the patient is having obstructive jaundice leading to cholangitis, acute cholangitis, and you know very well that the acute cholangitis is having a very uh, you know, grave prognosis if it is not treated properly. And the patient is asking, do you think that I will be able to attend the marriage ceremony of my daughter that is coming tomorrow? You will not give false hope. Here, the principle of truth telling, the ethical principle will apply, but you will say that, sorry, sir, I don't think so, you will be able to tell. So I hope I have answered your question in detail. Yes, Dr. Nisha, please unmute yourself. Sir, I just had a doubt uh, regarding the consent obtained from a suicidal person. Will it be valid, sir? Like here we are telling... Absolutely we are... not. Suicidal patient has lost all the capacity. You cannot take any decision from the suicidal patient. Suicidal patient cannot make any decision. Even if he's saying to you that I can do this or this or this, nothing will apply because he has lost the capacity. The person who is having suicidal ideation, a suicidal thought, it means that uh, uh, he has lost all the capacity. Uh, sir, but uh, initially we are mentioning we have taken the consent of your daughter to speak with you. So uh, I just had a doubt regarding that. You, you have taken the consent. You are telling the daughter to talk about her health condition with the father, number one. Number two, it is not about any procedure. Number three, I am just giving you example that the patient can be suicidal because she was having depression, but it doesn't mean that she was having suicide, so suicidal ideation. But the rule of the thumb is suicidal patient cannot be competent, do not have capacity. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Dr. Mushtaba, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, sir. I just had one confusion. Is this duty of candor a legal issue or an ethical issue? Usually, they are classifying it as a legal issue. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Dr. Kumar, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. I have a question regarding the indication of the interferon in this patient. Uh, the patient uh, is having depression, so should we start interferon in this patient? Okay, one thing I want to sell, tell you. Sometimes, say for example, a patient is having ulcerative colitis, okay? And you think that this condition or this, uh, what you say, uh, 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 this uh, severity falls in the criteria of mild. According to true love's criteria, we are dividing ulcerative colitis in three, mild, moderate, severe, okay? But you think that this is mild, but your consultant has advised to start the patient on steroids. 
So we have to follow what is written in the scenario. We have to follow whether it is uh, written according to the scenario or not, but we have to follow what exactly the, uh, uh, has been written in the scenario. Say, for example, the patient is in severe criteria of ulcerative colitis, but the consultant has decided that this patient should be started on the oral steroid. So you will have to start oral steroids. Dr. Kumar, I hope it's clear now. Suppose, sir, uh, this patient, uh, the, uh, any surrogate uh, told us that uh, I read it from the internet that depression may cause, uh, means interferon may cause more depression to of my Of course, daughter when or the consultant, like when so the consultant has, oh, yes, we have to answer, like this is the same concern which can arise with the steroids, that the steroids can cause this, this, this. I am already diabetic and you are starting on steroids. It will worsen my diabetic control. I have I came to know that the steroids are worsening the random blood sugar control. So please don't start with the steroid. So the consultant has taken all the pros and cons and has been discussed this case in the multidisciplinary team. So we have to follow it. And we can say that, sir, we will okay. take you in strict follow-up. And anytime any symptoms are getting worsened do let us know, okay? That's great, okay, sir, now it's okay. clear. So it means you have to follow whatever. Yes, so, uh, sorry, your mic is again uh, muted. Dr. Kumar, please unmute, please unmute. Yes, so I yes, mean we have that... to follow. Yes, we yes, have sir. to follow. So I mean, uh, we have to follow. Yeah, yes, whatever written yes, in the scenario, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kumar. Thank you. Now, Thank you, Dr. Mania, Dr. Mania, please unmute yourself. Dr. Mania, please use the raise hand option. Good. Dr. Mania, please unmute yourself. Sir, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So, are you ready for your station two? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I am posting the scenario, rather uh, I am sharing the screen. Okay, sir. Okay, Dr. Mania, are you yes, able sir. to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, take your time, then get back to me. You have three minutes. Okay, sir.
Dr. Mani, are you ready? Sir, 30 seconds. Okay. Sir, we can start. Okay. Dr. Mania, just a second. I'm giving you a timer. And your time starts now. Sir, my scenario? Your scenario, you want me to show the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, just a second. I'm not starting. I can even post in your Zoom chat box. Yes. Just a second. Okay, the scenario is there in your Zoom chat box. If you want, I can okay. also share the screen. Just okay, a sorry. Second. Is so it is open now? Okay, okay, okay. Doctor Mania, there is some uh, problem and uh, some noise in your background. Sir, sir, it's okay. So now it is okay, I think. Okay, start now. Okay. <coughs> so, hello. Good evening. Hello, good evening. I am Dr. Mania Parvin, one of the doctors in today's screening. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I talking with Mr. Asif, 50 years old? Yes, I am. Okay. Hello, sir. I hope you don't have to wait too long to see me. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your concern. Okay, uh, sir, how are you feeling now? And uh, we are here actually to talk about your problem. And would you uh, tell me more about your problem? Yes, doctor, I am having some problem. I feel that something, something is getting obstructed or you can so getting stopped in my chest. Whenever I am eating, I feel that it is not easy to let it go. Okay, so for how long you are suffering from this problem? I am having this problem for about, I think, six months now. Six months. So for the six months, it is gradually worsening or it is same? It is, I think, same. Okay. Sir, for um, it, difficulty, sir, is there any specific food association like it orsen with some solid foods or some liquid foods? for which kind of foods is more discomfort? I think it is both with the solids as well as with the liquids. But sometimes okay. I have to drink the water to let the food bolus go into my tummy. Okay. Sir, uh, and it's, uh, sir, in, it's, sir in, do you have any foul smelling? From your food? From, from your food? Mouth. No, Sorry? not from your not mouth. From your mouth. No. Okay. Okay. And uh, sir, any specific um, any specific uh, things that relieves your um, difficulty? Like you no. have to uh, drink water. No. Sometimes I have okay. to drink the water, but it always no. not improve my symptoms. Okay, sir, do you have any pain in your chest or any no, heartburn? No, no pain, no pain, no heartburn. Okay, sir, any metallic taste in your mouth? No. Okay, sir, any water brush in your mouth? No. Okay, sir, sir, do you have any tummy pain? No. 
sir after taking food is there any tummy distension no okay sir uh, do you have any pro um, um, problem like cough no okay so do you have any uh, racing or pacing of your heart beats no okay sir uh, do um, uh, do sir do you have any problem uh, with uh, like sir do you have any fever with no this? okay sir how how was your appetite uh my appetite is good but yeah i am avoiding taking the more food because i'm afraid of taking it as it will stuck in my chest okay sir in the recent time do you have experienced any weight changes for this problem yes i think i have lost about 3 kilograms of weight over 6 months sir um uh, sir it is intentional or unintentional of course it was unintentional okay and obviously uh, sir uh, are your appetite is intact sorry sir what about your appetite appetite is okay appetite is good okay sir okay sir sir do you have any rash in any parts of your body no rash sir does this uh, uh, symptom improving your or uh, daily activities mm, yes of course yes sir uh, how about your mood nowadays mood is okay okay so do you have any specific weather preferences no okay so how about your sleep sleep is normal okay okay then sir sir do you have any oral uh, soreness oral soreness you mean where you mean in mouth mouth yes sir in mouth cavities mouth sores no i am not having any mouth sores okay sir any joint pains no okay sir um, sir do you have any known medical condition like high blood pressure uh yes i am diabetic okay sir for how long you are diabetic i am diabetic for about last 7 years last 7 years sir, sir how about your control i don't know but i try to be a good patient by taking insulin in time insulin in time okay sir are you regularly follow up with your eye doctor and kidney doctors yes i am following my eye doctor as well as kidney doctor on the yearly basis okay okay sir um uh, sir do you have ever have any uh, stroke or any heart mm. problems no okay uh, okay sir um so do you have any allergy to any specific medication yes i am allergic to penicillin allergic to penicillin okay okay sir uh, any of your family member is suffering from sir same kind of illness i don't know whether this is a same illness or not but my father has been diagnosed as the case of cancer in the food file cancer in my the mother she is having something called aplasia my yes. sister she was having some deficiency in the blood and they were saying that she is having some fold in the food pipe sir so some my some fold in the food pipe okay my granddad was having something called myasthenia gravis okay sir okay sir um, sir do you have um, taking any medication other than insulin on regular basis mm, no okay okay sir and uh, sir um, do you uh, taking any herbal medication or over the counter medication sometimes i am taking multivitamins otherwise i am not taking any herbal preparation okay Okay, sir. Do you have any? Uh, uh, okay, sir. Sir, sir. Um, uh, from your notes, uh, sir. Do you smoke? I know that you smoke. 
Ah, yes, I am smoking. Sir, for how many sticks or for how many days? How many sticks for how many days? I have not so how many years? Sir, how, how many, many years? years? I am smoking at least 30 sticks or sometimes a 40 sticks for last one year. Last one year. Okay. Okay, so, sir, do you drink alcohol? No. Okay, sir, um, what about your job? I am a successful businessman. Okay. Sir, do you drive? A lot. Sir, um, drive. Do you drive? Yes, yes, a lot. I love okay. driving sports cars. Okay, okay. Sir, and uh, sir, uh, do you travel recently or do you have been travel to any of the countries? Yes, I often travel. Sir, which country you travel? Would usually, you usually to USA, sometimes to Canada for my business purpose. Sir, from your travel, in, during your traveling, sir, do you stay in uh, which kind of hotels, like, and from which kind of, uh, which kinds of foods you're taking during a stay there? I am always preferring the five-star hotels with bottled water. As a risk businessman. Okay, yes, sir. Sir, uh, let's uh, move with some uh, question, few more questions. Uh, sir, uh, do you have any headache? No. Any weakness in any part of your body? No. Okay. Um, any weakness, uh, do you, uh, you don't have any weakness in any part of your body. Sir, any tingling or any numbness in any part of your body? Mm. No. Okay, so uh, anybody saying that uh, you are uh, you are getting paler than before? No. Okay, sir. So, uh, so do you have uh, any problem in your water works, like any uh, difficulty in your urination in no. your water work? Sir, any reduced amount? No. Sir, uh, what about your bowel habit? It is okay. What do you mean by okay? Okay, sir, um, as uh, like, uh, are you constipated or you, you are experiencing any loose motion? No. Okay, no, any change in your bowel habit, right? No. Sir, what about your um, diet? Sir, would you tell me more about your diet pattern? Are you taking any balanced diet? Or... I always try to take a balanced, well balanced diet. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, now um, let me uh, uh, some few more questions. Sir, uh, with uh, whom you are living now? I am living with my family. Okay. Sir, are you financially supported? Yes. Okay. Sir, uh, now uh, tell me uh, what about your concern today for me? What do you think? What's going on with me? Okay, uh, okay, uh, sir. With your um, according to your history, uh, I am I um, I talked with you for some time, and uh, my um, thinking is that you are suffering from a condition which is called um, ecclesia, and for this condition, uh, you are suffering from like a difficulty in your letting food down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for this condition, immediately after our meeting, we will run some tests with you. And after doing our basic test and uh, some camera test also, uh, we will refer to our guard doctor and uh, mm -hmm. also medicine doctor uh, for you. And uh, with that- uh, Why I am having ulcers on my hands? Why I am having ulcers off and on on my hands? Sir, I asked about joint pain. No, I am not having joint any joint pain. pain. And you only have ulcers. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, and you have got ulcers or any uh, skin Soreness itchy? Soreness. on my fingers. Okay. Okay, sir. So does this soreness? Uh, Two minutes from now. Okay, sir. So does this soreness uh, suffering from? Uh, does this soreness having any 
color change when you exposure to cold some problem in your connection connection problem connection problem hello yes go ahead yes sir so with this uh, problem uh, does your skin uh, go having any color change when it exposed to uh, cold or hot weather it never happen always but yeah it has happened twice in the cold that my two fingers are changing the color yes sir okay sir uh, for how long you are um, having this problem i am having this problem in this last winters twice okay, okay. Oh, yes, uh, and for this uh, problem, we will uh, surely um, advise you to wear some warm gloves and keep your hand warm. And for this problem, we also um, uh, give you some medication, uh, uh, um, some medication uh, called calcium channel. You, you think that I have got a cancer? No. Do you think that my condition is curable? Sir, your condition is not curable, but it uh, uh, some it is uh, controllable, I think. Your time it's is up. Problem. One minute for reflection, then we will move ahead. Okay, sir. Okay, can you please summarize your case for us on the positive findings? Okay, sir, so my patient, um, Mr. Asif Khan, 50 years old, old patient, uh, businessman by profession and a smoker. Patient presented with the complaint of dysphagia for last six months and which is gradually progressive and for this, this uh, which is uh, painful and for this uh, condition, uh, he also got uh, some uh, suffering from some uh, weight loss, which is about six uh, six kilogram, six uh, three kilogram for the last six months, uh, with uh, some unintentional weight loss, which was unintentional. And with this condition, uh, she also she uh, he he doesn't having he also he also have some history of soreness in uh, his hand and um, soreness in her hand. And also with a significant family history of uh, significant family history of uh, CS trauma with ecclesia and uh, some you know, condition family uh, problem of grandfather uh, and uh, with okay, what um, are your uh, top three uh, differentials? Sir, my top three differentials uh, is uh, sir with uh, some soreness in your uh, hand after uh, yet uh, that. So first differential was uh, this may be a case of um, systemic sclerosis uh, or like press syndrome. Second one is sir, uh, ecclesia cardia. And uh, uh, third and very lower the down, this may Dr. be a case Kamaya, of very difficult. Like causing problem, also. there's some connection problem. Might be it is from my end or your end. Somebody please write in the Zoom chat box. Are you able to listen to me clearly? Or there's some problem in Dr. Mania's voice? Because uh, I'm not clear, listening to you very clearly. Sometimes your voice is breaking up. Somebody please write down the Zoom chat box. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm getting your answers. Okay, so uh, uh, Dr. Mania, yes, please sir. try to correct your uh, connection. Now tell me how you will thoroughly investigate this patient. Okay, sir. 
first uh, i should have to do some routine blood uh, test for which i want to see some routine uh, complete blood count to see any feature of anemia with uh, esr to see any inflammatory marker and also some uh, investigation for some vitamin deficiency like uh, features of malabsorption features of so def any deficiency like complete blood count malabsorption Malabsorption. Sir, so, like any deficiency for patient. Okay, go ahead. Then, okay. Uh, I, immediately after that, I want to do some routine ultrasound scan. And ultrasound scan around. in this patient. Why? What is the indication? Um, Sir, so as a part of routine investigation? No, there is no indication to do every investigation as a part of routine. Okay. There should be some logic behind each investigation when you are telling to your examiner in MR, CP, UK, PACES examination. Okay. Sir, so, um, uh, immediately after that, I want to go for upper J endoscopy and also imperium swallow esophagus. Will you do endoscopy first, then do barium swallow? Um, sir, I want to do some non-invasive test first, the barium swallow esophagus first, and then upper G endoscopy. Any other investigations you want to run in this patient? Sir, I want to do some blood test for a specific marker for uh, excluding systemic sclerosis. Okay, what else, uh, 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 which markers you will check? So I, I want to uh, do for um, ANA, anti-DS DNA, and... Um, Anti-DS DNA, why? So ANA accepted, ANA yes, accepted, why anti-DS DNA? No, sir. Any other investigations you want to run in this uh, in this patient? Sir, Anka. No, no, no. How you will manage this patient? Okay, uh, sir. I, I, if my if the patient after getting test, uh, it is a case of systemic sclerosis. Then we uh, have to go for. Uh, for manage the patient's uh, two factors like dysphagia. Uh, for this, we have went for esophageal stenting and uh, another one is the Raynaud phenomenon. For that, we have um, some non-pharmacological and pharmacological. Ph non-pharmacological management is wearing some warm gloves mm -hmm. and also some sir, calcium, nifi dipping, calcium channel mm -hmm. blockers. Also. I don't know why you want to do stenting in this patient. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's come to feedback. Dr. Mania, yes, the scenario um, provided to you was dysphagia and it has been written over there that there's some difficulty in letting food down, right? Yes. And um, this scenario um, is still present in your Zoom chat box. And I yes, can um, repost for you guys if there's any ambiguity. I have posted it. So this patient is having some dysphagia and is smoker and businessman by profession and vitally almost stable and ESR of 30. So first of all, whenever you are going inside your examination hall, you should write down the possible differentials. Why? Because these differentials will clarify your path will clarify your mind, will make a path for you how you will obtain the history from this patient. So as we are entering in our examination hall, we will say to patient that I am this and this, and I am supposed to take your medical history. I will obtain appropriate consent. Then I will start and I will ask myself whether the complaint is pain or non-pain. I always state to all of you that in the case of pain, do Socrates. In the case of non-pain symptom, do OD para. In the OD para, 
what exactly he means by not letting food down. He will tell to you that I am having difficulty in letting food down, in my food is getting stuck. So first of all, you will localize, localize the symptom exactly at what level your food is getting stuck. Might be is having difficulty in chewing up the food might be is having difficulty in solving portion of uh, the system like his difficulty having solving is having odynophagia is having problem in the throat it is very important to localize might be he's having problem in letting food down because the food is getting stuck in the mid thorax might be the problem is in the lower esophageal sphincter so the causes are different. If it is near to the esophagus and the distal part of the esophagus, it might be some cancer adenocarcinoma. If it is in the mid esophagus, it might be aplasia. It might be squamous carcinoma. It might be some, uh, what you say, uh, uh, web, okay? Then if it is in the throat, it might be some causes of uh, uh, nasopharyngeal dysphagia. It might be because of myasthenia. It might be because of some local pathology. It might be because of tonsils. So first of all, you have to localize. Before you start your history, localize exactly, exactly where is the problem? Exactly what is the problem? Then do Odipara. How it started, first is onset. Go for onset, how it started. Then duration, okay? Now duration, since how long you're asking? Progression, is it getting progressive or it is same? Now, if it is getting progressive, you should think about something called cancer. Clear, Dr. Mania? Yes, sir. Are you with me? Then of course, progression you asked, associated symptoms. Now in the associated symptoms, I do agree that you're asking about halitosis, bad breath from the mouth. Feel free to ask about any manners to take the food out. Feel free to ask other things like vomiting, like feeling sickness. And I do agree that you're asking me about the weight loss, a good thing. You're asking me about uh, acid burst. You're asking me about GERD symptoms. That's a good thing. Then how it get improves. Usually the aplasia patients are doing some manoeuvres to let food down. Sometimes they are taking a bolus of water. Sometimes they are standing up to let food down. Ask about that. Then how it get worsened? With which food it is getting worsened? If it is to the both solids as well as liquid, it is usually the neurological cause of dysphagia. It is not always. Remember, not always. Just giving you a rough estimate. But it, if it is only initially with the solids, then with the liquids, it means that the lumen is now getting obstructed. First, the lesion was small. Now it is increasing, 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 obstructing the lumen. First, it was for solid, or it was also for the liquids. Then, after that, you should ask yourself, are you able to make your diagnosis or not? If you are able to make the diagnosis, if the diagnosis is in your hand, it's a good thing. But if still it is not in your hand, first thing which you will do is that, ask yourself which system is involved. Now ask about everything linked to GI. Loose motions, constipation, jaundice, tummy pain, tummy distension. Ask about malina, ask about hematemesis, everything. If this is a cancer, you should ask about malina, hematemesis, might be some bleeding. Then, of course, after completing the history of GI, ask the general questions. General questions are very helpful, like the fevers, like the, you know, I always teach you the weather preferences because it will also rule out your thyroid issues. Next swelling, and ask about sweatings, 
and ask about rash and ask about uh, weight loss and ask about lump symptoms. Now, if it is a cancer and you're getting lumps and bumps, again, this is helping you in making your diagnosis. It is our scheme. After that, stop here. Reorganize yourself. Ask yourself towards which direction your case is going. Because even if you are not able to get any positive finding till now, still you are getting some negatives. Still, you are rolling out some negatives. Still, you are rolling out different diseases unconsciously. So, after that, bring up your paper. Which paper? The paper which you have written while you were sitting outside the examination hall. Now, in the differentials of dysphagia, what you have written outside the examination hall? Tell me, Dr. Mania. Sir, according to the patient is, sir, first of all, this may be a case of simple es esophagitis, then sir, CS uh, okay. esophagus. Esophagitis, good. Then for the esophagitis, mm -hmm. you have asked me about oral ulcers, good. White spots in the mouth, you should ask, good. Okay, then what else? Then sir, uh, uh, sir, CS esophagus, uh, in case of CS you are asking me about Weight, weight loss, loss good. Weight you loss, are asking about lumps and bumps, good. Lumps and bumps. Then, then what was Any, in your differentials? Mm -hmm. Sir, then sir, uh, another differential was eclesia. Eclesia, you are rolling out, good. What else? What was in your differential? Sir, and uh, after that, suddenly, sir, a condition that sir presented crest syndrome and like systemic esclerosis. why you are not then asking about the other causes of dysphagia which are not linked to GI. Motor neuron disease can lead to dysphagia. Sir, I, sir, I, can lead to dysphagia. Yes, go ahead. Sir, I asked for the neurological syndrome individually, good, headache, good, weakness good, of any good. part of your body, good. and I any know. numbness. I know, I know you are asking. But I'm just telling you differentials, motor neuron disease, yes. myasthenia gravis, yes. then Crest syndrome. Then, yes, of course, you need to rule out one by one all the diseases which can lead to dysphagia. Now in the motor neuron disease, in the systemic inquiry, you're asking me about any weakness in any limb, good. You're asking me about shakiness, balance problem, good. But you are not asking me about drooping of eyelids. Yes, sir. You are not asking me about fatigue. Yes, sir. You are not asking me about voice changes. You are not asking me any lump, big lump or growth in the throat. You are not asking me any red spots, any red spots on the skin. So I ask uh, only about rashes. And I always teach you in the course that with the rash, ask two more things. Rash, pigmentation, and red spots. Rash, pigmentation, and red spots. Rash will never cover pigmentation. Rash will never come, uh, cover red spots. So whenever you're asking about the rash, ask about pigmentation, ask about red spots on the skin or on the mucosa. Then for the crest, if it was in your differential, categorically ask me about Raynaud phenomena. How you will ask any pain in the fingers, any change in the color of the fingers, especially on exposure to cold. Ask about it's any soreness of the fingers because you know the calcinosis is very painful. It will lead to soreness on the fingers. Then, of course, you should ask about tightening, tightening, tightening of the skin. Because right now, in the station two, patient is not sitting in front of you. It's a surrogate. Yes, ask sir. That is the problem. Any skin changes, any skin problems, any skin tightening. Okay. Then go yes, ahead. Sir. Ask about the past history. Then allergy is good. Then the medical history. Now in the medication history, some medications can also lead to esophagitis. 
ask about any previous intake of any medicines like bisphosphonates are notorious to cause esophagitis tetracyclines are notorious to cause esophagitis that is called pill esophagitis yes. sometimes iron preparations then of course you have to go ahead with a family history inquire yes. about the similar yes. problems categorically inquire about the cancers categorically inquire about any skin problems because dysphagia can have some other systemic problems also like motor neuron disease like systemic sclerosis or uh, crest syndrome like other stuff then of course social history is very important now coming to your diagnosis that is the crest syndrome in the end i am giving you the clue and you were able to diagnose that it's the crest syndrome but this is a very clear cut you know diagnosis simpler calcinosis patient will have a soreness on the fingers this soreness is quite painful it is because of calcinosis then r for renault phenomena categorically ask about color changes in the fingers ask about pain in the fingers especially while exposure on a exposure to a coat then of course if it is not presenting with dysphagia ask about dysphagia thing or difficulty in letting food down mm -hmm. ask about skin tightening ask about difficulty in opening mouth ask about right spots now your task is not over if you have diagnosed crest syndrome a good thing i congratulate you but your task is not over why because you have to explore about other autoimmune diseases explore about mixed connective tissue diseases explore about other hair loss related problem feel hair free loss. to ask about hair loss oral ulcers Sorry. ask about redness of the eyes. Of eyes. ask about gritty sensation Sorry. dryness of the eyes and mouth okay because yes, about the private crest. parts good good because the crest is a one diagnosis but it is a family mixed connective <laughs> tissue diseases and in the paces and also in your of course real clinical life whenever you are getting one 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 diagnosis that is autoimmune disease try to seek try to search for other autoimmune problems which are linked or associated clear yes sir sir no. anti sorry sir in investigation i should have to do sir anti rnp antibody now coming to coming to the investigations in the investigation first we have to do the journal investigation but in the general investigations or non specific investigation remember examiner will ask you the specific reason of doing each investigation a safe doctor a good doctor is using the resources wisely so there should be logic behind any investigation you are starting for cbc good you are checking anemia because the patient is having um, um you know a decreased diet intake for last couple of months and might be he is having anemia good thing you want to check for uh, uh iron deficiency might be you are you are checking for esophagitis good you want to check for crp esr good you want to check for um, uh, you are thinking about something called uh, renal involvement crest syndrome good check renal function test if it is deemed necessary or in your history then of course if you think that the patient is having some uh, problem like um, 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 because the calcinosis good go ahead check for the calcium check for the serum electrolytes phosphorus good thing now coming to the specific investigations of your crest syndrome specific investigations first is anti centrum your antibodies anti centrum anti 
SCL70 antibodies, but they are usually present in the diffused children. Then ANAs, not anti DSDN, ANAs. Yes. Then coming to the features, features of Crest syndrome. First feature is calcinosis, check for the calcium levels, check for the phosphate. Then Renault phenomena. In the Renault phenomena, you should uh, know that the ANA, the ANA positivity is, you know, having the prediction that this patient will get Renault phenomena sometimes if required Doppler. Now, this patient having esophageal dysmotility, that's a good thing. You want to go for a barium swallow, initially good, but this is not complete approach. You need a purge endoscopy. Why? Because you want to rule out sinister pathology. Yes. Then you need to go for esophageal manometry. There is dismortality, dismortality, dismortality. Yes, sir. Clear? Yes, sir. Then, of course, for sclerodactyly and telangiectasia, you need appropriate, uh, what you say, skin uh, examination. Now, sometimes you need uh, the x rays if there is some calcinosis, like some palpable nodules, or some underneath the skin, there is some calcinosis you're getting, you can check for a radiological examination, but never forget uh, uh, Doppler scan in Renault. Yes, sir. Now, how you will manage? Management of this disease is not very simple. It is not straightforward. It is not that much easy that we can directly say, oh, I will do this, this, and this, and I will finish. First is non-pharmacology. In the non-pharmacological, complete patient education, patient counseling, the social aspects of the patient life. Then, of course, uh, you have to involve the multidisciplinary team. Here, skin doctor will be involved, that is rheumatologist. You have to inform uh, 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 what you say, uh, gastroenterologist, and you have to involve other relevant specialities to help this patient in a better comprehensive way. No management. Yes. No, this is Crest syndrome. In the Crest syndrome, we have to manage C, manage R, manage E, manage S, manage T. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, first of all, coming to the calcinosis. Calcinosis is not having any specific treatment option available uh, for the calcinosis that is leading to your uh, digital ulceration. But sometimes, sometimes the steroid local ointment can help. Yes. For the Renault phenomena, you know very well, you need to tell to examiner the calcium channel blockers. Clear? Sometimes yes. give the patient prostacyclines analogs. Clear? But you mention yes. it. If you are not mentioning it, you are not managing the Crest syndrome as a whole. Because this is not just a dysphagia. This is a syndrome, a Crest syndrome, and you are managing a syndrome. So for digital alterations, conservative management, sometimes local steroids. For this thing called uh, your Renault, calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, like tenoprost, that is prostacyclic analogs. And sometimes you're also giving uh, other like alpro uh, studil and all that stuff, which are post postpregnant E1 analogs. Then coming to the third, that is esophageal dysmortality. I don't know why you are doing, uh, you know, the stenting in this patient. There is fibrosis, there's dysmortality. 
you have to dilate, you have to do the dilatation if there is any stricture. Clear? Then yes, you have to give H2 blockers or PPIs. And of course, you have to teach the patient to take more frequent small meals. Why more frequent? Because if he's taking small meals, there will be nutritional deficiencies. He can take small meals, but more frequent. More frequent. And more liquid diets. And in this regard, you have to make a referral to the dietitian. For dietitian also. Clear? Yes. Now, sclerodactyly. What is sclerodactyly? That is, tell me, skin tightening. It is skin tightening of the okay. hand. For that, there is some role of D pencilamine. And of course, you have to give a lot of emollient and a lot of skin softeners. Then, Tendectasias. Tendectasias, it depends <clears throat> if it is bothersome to the patient, if it is causing cosmetic problems, you have to go ahead with laser, laser therapy. Laser therapy. Laser yeah. therapy. And beware, these patients can have tendectasias anywhere, can have the GI bleeding. Yes. So you have to also take the history of all these sinister presentations. Clear? Yes, sir. Any questions or concerns? So whenever there is dysphagia, the message over here is that don't always consider GI. Think out of the box. Sir, sir, actually, problem was the, sir, if not, um, real patient is not here, then, sir, the, there may be a big blunder. Because, sir, if a patient of systemic sclerosis, but uh, after seeing the patient, there is some concept and perception. Uh, but, sir, in case of dummy patient, this sir, is they, what you have to practice. In the station five, most likely there will be a real patient of a particular disease. In the yes, station sir. two, it is your practice to elicit, elicit each symptom, elicit yes. each sign by your history. It is also a good practice because sometimes a clinical sign is so subtle that you are unable to diagnose it. Sometimes you are unable to even catch that their skin type. So your history should be very strong. Yes. Okay? Yes, sir. Good. Said so, uh, at the, from the sir, very beginning, when patient said that I haven't any joint pain or joint dashes, then I thought that um, uh, dermatological condition is already excluded. But no, 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 no. So that is the blunder. No, where was the blunder? I, I'm telling you. I told you that whenever you're asking about the rash, just ask two more questions with the rash. Pigmentation, yes. red spots. Pigmentation, red spots. Yes. If you're asking me at that time, I am sure you will catch the diagnosis. Okay, good. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Thank you, Dr. Saise, please unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Can you hear Saise, me? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask two questions. Uh, first question is, can we not say simply uh, swallowing difficulty rather than yeah, why is it not clear? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can listen to you, but you are speaking from too far. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yes, 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 uh, now say. Uh, can we not say simply difficulty in swallowing rather than difficulty in letting food down? Uh, I mean, is it American jargon, uh, swallowing difficulty? I mean, so if there is any confusion in the presenting complaint or if the patient is giving you the history, might be you are appearing in your PACES exam in Kenya or in UK or in uh, Malaysia or in Pakistan or in Oman, you should explore it. You should explore what exactly patient mean by the presenting complaint. So it is a task of the candidate. 
if there is any confusion, if you're confused what exactly meant by letting food down, explore it. Ask, sir, what has happened to you? What's wrong with you? What do you feel? What exactly your complaint is? Okay. And the second one is, can I put esophageal calibrations on the second depression dialysis? Since he's a businessman and a frequent foreign cargo. Esophageal candidiasis, yes. Esophageal candidiasis can be in your differential list because the patient is having some weight loss with uh, the dysphagia. But we have to explain why this patient has got esophageal candidiasis. What's the reason behind? One is the DM might be. but my candidate is not taking the sexual history. My candidate is not taking the history of uh, IV drug abuse. So it is very, very important to explore it, to mention that the patient is having esophageal candidiasis because the next question will be why this patient has got esophageal candidiasis. Secondly, even if we are putting esophageal candidiasis in our differential list, we have to explain why this patient is having esophageal candidiasis the last six months. It should be then disseminated esophageal candidiasis. Candidiasis should disseminate up till now. Clear? My last question is about, okay, clear, clear. Uh, my last question is, uh, how to say uh, 24 hour esophageal manometry in layman terms? I mean, not a jargon. Esophage esophageal manometry is not 24 hours. It is 24 hours pH monitoring. And the manometry is just to check the pressures in your esophagus. So you can say, if you want to explain to patient that I am planning for the manometry, can simply say that we will check some pressures in your food pipe. That's it. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, if there are no more questions, with this, we are concluding our session. Thanks to all of the active participants and the listeners for your participations. Have a good night and goodbye.